Hello, this is Mr. Buss, and in this video, we're going to go over a lab where we determine what the molarity of a potato cell would be. So in order to do that, I've got some concentrations of sugar water or sucrose already made up, and they're made up in um, basically increments from uh, 1.0 molar to 0 molar. And so 1.0, 0.8, 0.6, 0.4, 0.2, and 0. And so just to get a reminder uh, of what molarity is, is it basically just deals with the concentration of the solute, in this case sucrose, dissolved in a solvent, which would be water. And so what the, mol the molarity of a potato cell would be, would be a combination of a lot of different things, a lot of different solutes all dissolved inside the uh, cell cytosol. We want to know what the, the overall concentration is of that. So we're going to take this potato, cut it up into a lot of little chunks or pieces, and put those pieces, weigh them, put those pieces into cups, add the um, sucrose concentrations, and then let it sit overnight and observe the, the change in the potato cell mass. And so, you know, if the potatoes chunks were placed in a, a hypertonic solution, such as the 1.0 molar sucrose is probably going to be, uh, then the, we'll notice that the, the chunks lose mass over time. And if the potato cell is placed in a hypotonic solution, for example, the zero molar sucrose, which is just purified water, uh, then we would imagine that the potato cells would gain mass over time because the water will move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut these, uh, cut this potato up into chunks and uh, go ahead with the procedure. Okay, as you can see, I've got uh, the potato cut into pieces, and I've kind of got the pieces grouped together for each of the containers. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and put about 50 milliliters of each solution into the, the cups to get ready for the next step. Okay, I should mention that uh, the food coloring that I put in here uh, is not going to affect the experiment. And I know I use the same beaker every time, uh, but I don't think it's going to really matter as I went from 1 to 0.8 to 0.6 to 0.4 to 0.2 to 0. Uh, that shouldn't be a big deal. And so the next step is going to be weighing these uh, chunks of potatoes, the groups, and then writing the weight down on the cup. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these sit overnight. I actually might put them in the fridge and let them sit for a couple days. And then I'm going to remove them from the containers, rinse them out really well, dry off the potato chunks, and reweigh them. And again, I'm anticipating the uh, potato chunks in the very sugary solutions, okay, uh, which would be hypertonic, would, uh, that they would actually uh, weigh less. And then for the chunks that are in the hypotonic solutions, I would imagine that they would uh, have a, a greater mass or weigh more. And at some point there'll be a cutoff where um, we can graph that and we can determine, okay, at what point uh, are the potato chunks going from losing mass to gaining mass? And that would be what we would call an isotonic solution. Okay, so here we are, it's the next day. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the potato chunks from each of the 
solutions, the sucrose solutions. I'm going to rinse them off really well, then I'm going to dry them off and reweigh them and see if the initial weight of like 14.8 or 17.7 and so on is uh, going to be uh, greater or lower than it, it was to start with. Okay, so I've got the potato chunks ready to be weighed. I uh, just want to show and point out that, um, you know, a, a qualitative observation would be that the chunks themselves actually, like the ones that were in the one molar sucrose solution, uh, you can just tell by feeling them that they are, they've lost, uh, they've lost water, they've lost mass, they just kind of feel uh, dehydrated, so to speak. And then the ones that were in uh, the more of the, the watery solution, like the zero molar su sucrose, which was pure water, uh, they, you, you just tell that, that they feel crisper, and they feel full, just as a qualitative observation. But let's go ahead and get the quantitative observation, the, the numbered measurements. So, So to answer our original question is, what's the molarity of a potato cell? Uh, we don't know yet for sure, but we know that the potatoes, when they are in the sucrose solutions from 0.4 to 0.6, 0.8 to 1, that they all lost mass. So they were all in a hypertonic solution over here. And the potato chunks, uh, the 0.2 molar and the 0 molar, uh, they all gained mass. And so they were in a hypotonic solution. So hypertonic solutions here, hypotonic solutions here, relative to the potato cell. So we know that somewhere between these two, there's an isotonic solution that we can determine that would be equal to the uh, molarity of a potato cell. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, graph that, and we'll take a look and find out what that actually is.